so hello everyone uh, my name is varad dau and i am a doctoral student at the department of chemical engineering iit kanpur and i am also a pmrf fellow at the same department so i welcome you all to this sixth lecture of structure of atom so in the previous class we have seen that the light con uh, light uh, was considered to be a, a wave like uh, the light has a, a dual nature that is a wave like and particle like so we have also we have studied about the wave like uh, particle like nature with the discovery of electrons and protons then we have studied the different models which could describe the distribution of the subatomic particles inside the atom then further we have seen uh, the what are the waves and their uh, fundamental characteristics and various terminologies like wavelength frequency and velocity further we have seen why the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation and, uh, and uh, planck's quantum theory was originated and the drawbacks of uh, wave like uh, wave like uh, nature so we have studied about the black body radiation and the photoelectric effect which which could not be explained by the wave like nature of the electromagnetic radiation then further we have studied about planck's quantum theory right and we have also solved a couple of examples so in today's class what we are going to study is we are going to study so the first class this class could be divided into two parts so initially we are going to study about uh, some theory that is the atomic spectra we will study about spectra we will study about two different types of spectra that is emission spectra and absorption spectra right and difference between them and then we will study about the emission spectra of hydrogen atom and uh, in the second part of the lecture we, we are going to solve some uh, solve, uh, solve some examples right so let us start So first, let me write down. So this is lecture C, structure of atom, right? So in today's class, we are going to study about atomic spectra. So the first one would be emission spectra, and the other would be absorption spectra, right? So when white light from sun is passed through a prism it splits into a series of colors known as rainbow of colors that is violet indigo blue green yellow and red a similar spectrum is observed when a rainbow forms in the sky this means that sunlight is comp uh, composed of collection of electromagnetic waves having different wavelengths the prism bends the light of different wavelengths to different extent extent the red color with the longest wavelength is deviated the least while the violet color with the shortest wavelength is deviated the most the splitting of light into a series of colors color color bands is known as dispersion and the series of color bands is called as a spectrum right so what we have is the splitting of light into a series of color bands is known as dispersion right and the series of color bands is called as spectrum so in this spectrum there is a continuity of color that is one color merges into the other without any gap or discontinuity and such a spectrum is known as a continuous spectrum right the continuous spectrum can also be obtained from the light emitted from some incandescent substance right so let us study about atomic spectra so unlike the spectrum obtained by analyzing the sunlight the spectra of atoms are not continuous right so this is to be noted so this is point 1 so unlike the spectrum the spectrum of atom are not continuous right the spectrum of a, the spectra of atoms consist of sharp well defined lines or bands corresponding to definite frequencies right 
the spectra of atom consists of sharp well defined lines or bands corresponding to definite frequencies right so there are two types of atomic spectra so first is emission spectra and the other is absorption spectra okay so let us study first about the emission spectra so the emission spectra are obtained when the radiations emitted from su from substances that have absorbed light light in, that have absorbed energy either by passing electric discharge through a gas at low pressure or by heating the substance to high temperature are analyzed with the help of spectroscope with the help of spectroscope so atoms molecules or ions that have absorbed radiations are said to be excited for example when the gases or vapors of chemical substance are heated by electric spark the light is emitted the color of light depends upon the substance under investigation like for example sodium or salt of potassium sodium or salts of potassium uh, sorry so sodium or salts of sodium gives off yellow light but while potassium or salts of potassium produces a violet color when the radiations emitted by different substances are analyzed the spectrum obtained consists of a sharp well defined lines each corresponding to a definite frequency of wavelength when the radiations emitted by different substances are analyzed the spectrum obtain consists of sharp well defined lines each corresponding to a definite frequency of wavelength such a spectrum consists of lines of definite frequency is called as light spectrum or discontinuous spectrum okay. so such spectrum are called as continuous spectrum right the line spectrum is known as atomic spectra because it is obtained by analyzing the emitted radiations from atoms by application of heat or any other form of energy by the application of heat or any other form of energy right the pattern of lines in the spectrum of an element is characteristics of that element and is different from all those of other elements right of that element and is different from those of all other elements right so in other words each element gives a unique spectrum of gives a unique spectrum of gives a unique spectrum irrespective of of even the form in which it is present since atoms of different element give characteristic set of lines of definite frequency emission spectra of definite frequencies emission spectra can be used in chemical analysis to identify and estimate the elements present in the sample characteristic set of lines to identify and estimate the elements 
present in a symbol. Right? So now let us solve some solved examples. Let us solve some examples, right? So the first question is we have electromagnetic radiation of wavelength two forty two nanometer is this sufficient to ionize ionize the sodium atom okay. so calculate the ionization energy of sodium In kilojoule per mole, right? So what we are given is value of Planck's constant has been given to us. So energy possessed by right ionization energy. So what we have is E is equals to H nu, which is nothing but H C by lambda, right? Where H has been given to us as six point six two six ten raised to power second. Thus, we are also given that C is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 whatever second and we are also given lambda is 242 nanometers which is nothing but this right? the energy will be H by lambda which is multiplied by 3 10 raised to power 8 meter per second divided by 242 raised to power minus 9 meter right so e comes out to be 8.21 10 raised to power minus 19 joule right so ionization energy for more is equal to 8.21 10 to power minus 19 joule multiplied by the Avogadro number, right? So which comes out to be 494 into 10 to power 3 joules, which is nothing but 494 kilojoule per mole. Right. So this is the answer. So the next question which we have is question two, which is calculate the minimum amount of energy that the photons must possess. To eject electrons, cesium metal, right? So what we are given is the threshold frequency of cesium metals is four point six ten raised to power fourteen second inverse. And H has also been given 6.626 10 raised to power minus joule second, right? So, what we want to have to find is the threshold frequency of cesium metal, right? So, the threshold frequency. Which is mu zero is the minimum frequency that 
that the photons must possess we eject electrons from metals metals right therefore the energy you are responding to mu zero is the minimum energy required which is also called as work function right Special frequency one point six into raised to power fourteen second inverse. So the minimum. <coughs> <laughs> minimum energy required we check the electrons from cesium metal is given by e0 is nothing but H nu zero, where yeah. H is the Planck's constant, right? It, which has a unit of joule second multiplied by four point six ten raised to power forty second inverse, which is nothing but six point six three into four point six into ten raised to power minus twenty joules, which comes out to be three point zero five. Ten raised to power minus nineteen joule. This way, but easy. So the work function is three point zero five into ten raised to power minus nineteen joule. Right. So let us move on to the next question. Question three. Calculate. Kinetic energy of the ejected electrons when ultra violet radiation of frequency. One point six ten to the power fifteen second inverse strikes the surface of potassium metal. Right. So what we are given is we are given a short frequency. Of potassium is five into ten to the power forty second inverse, and we are also given h is equal to six point six two six ten to the power minus thirty four joule second solution. Right? Kinetic energy of the Ejected electrons is given by total amount of incident energy minus the minimum work function, right? Right. We are view. So what we are given is we are given that H is equal to six point six two six ten raised to power minus thirty four joule second. Thus, we are also given. 
the frequency of incident radiation that is mu is nothing but 1.6 and this to power 50 second inverse we are also given that mu zero that is the minimum of function energy is uh, frequency is 10 raised to power minus 2 second inverse right so we just plug the known values into the expression so what we get is 6.62 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second multiplied by 1.6 10 raised to power 15 minus 5 into 10 raised to power 40 second inverse which corresponds to 6.68 10 raised to power minus 40 multiplied by given 10 raised to power 14 right which corresponds to 7.2 10 raised to power minus 90 joule the required kinetic energy is 7.29 into 10 raised to power minus 90. So let us move on to the fourth question. A 25 watt bulb emits monochromatic yellow light of wavelength 0.47 micrometer. Calculate the rate of emission of quality per second. Solution We know that energy of one photon is given by E is equals to HQ, which is nothing but E is equal to HC by lambda, where H is the Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, lambda we are already given. 0.57 micrometer right so e is going to be let's see for the amount 6.626 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second multiplied by 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second right divided by The wavelength, right? This implies E is nothing but 3.487 10 raised to power minus 19 joule, right? So now what we have is 25 watt is nothing but 25 joule per second. Therefore number of photons emitted per second is going to be 25 by 3.487 10 raised to power minus 19 which is 7.17 10 raised to power 19 second inverse right so this is the answer which you want right The next question is question number five. When light of wavelength 470 nanometer falls on the surface of potassium metal. Electrons are emitted with a velocity of 6.4 10 raised to power 4 meter per second. What is the, the minimum energy required? To remove an electron 
from potassium liquid. So what we have is velocity of emitted electrons. is given to us as 6.4 to the power 4 beta per second right and kinetic energy of emitted electrons is half mv square which is of 9.1 of 9.1 sorry so, kinetic energies so kinetic energies up into mass which is 9.1 10 raised to the power minus 31 kg multiplied by the velocity square right so what is the velocity 6.4 into 10 raised to power 4 meter per second square, right? Which corresponds to kinetic energy of 1.864 10 raised to power minus 31 kg meter square per second square, right? Which corresponds to 1.864 10 raised to power minus 31 joules, right? energy of photon so how can you write energy of photon right so how we write energy of photon it is nothing but e is equals to h nu which is h c by lambda so e is equals to 6.63 into then this to power third minus 34 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 10 raised to power 8 divided by wavelength which is this hence energy of one photon comes out to be 4.23 10 raised to power minus 19 joules right right so now what we need is the minimum energy required okay so what we need is minimum energy required to remove an electron is nothing but work function which is h into nu right so now Clearly, kinetic energy is h nu minus h nu naught, which is h nu minus nu naught, right? Or when you rephrase this, rearrange it, what we get is h nu h nu naught is equal to h nu minus kinetic energy, right? So which is h nu, which is what? 4.23 10 to power minus 19, right? Minus 1.864 into 10 raised to power minus 21 which corresponds to be 4 to 1 point 1 per into 10 raised to power minus 21 joule minimum energy required per mole is nothing but 421.14 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 multiplied by the Avogadro number, right? Which amounts to this, which is nothing but 253.6 10 raised to power 3 joule per mole, right? So, this is the final answer. So, I thank you all for attending this class and I hope to see you. Thank you.